Dudley, and I am the writer, director, and executive producer of Stab 4, and I also play Jay McConnell. Stab 4 was our very first movie that we had ever made, and we had no intention ever of posting it on YouTube or doing anything with it, actually. It was just kind of something I had written, because I love writing. If you don't know, I write kids' books, I write horror movies. I'm a big writing fan. So Stab 4 was kind of my love child to the Scream movies. I am a huge Scream fan and I wanted to do a project involving the Scream movie somehow and thinking way back uh, after the Scream movies had come out, before YouTube even existed and stuff like that, I had heard of several Scream fan films that were available for sale on VHS, mind you, that's how old I am. and how old the Scream movies are. There's one that stands out in my brain named Scream Louder, and as a kid, maybe an early teen, I'm trying to think of how old I was, probably about 13, I really, really wanted to see Scream Louder, like a, a Scream sequel that was made by somebody else, uh, because there wasn't a Scream 2 yet, and they hadn't continued on, so I loved the first Scream movie, and I really wanted to see more. So I was going to buy a copy, and I asked my mom, and she said no. Mm. <laughs> So she didn't want to send random people to money over the internet because the internet was also fairly new. So after I saw Scream Louder, I think I always kind of had this idea in my head that I wanted to make my own Scream fan film. And that kind of stewed and brewed and I never really got the chance uh, in high school or anything like that. I was really into musical theater, which is actually how I know a lot of people involved in our productions, uh, Rachel included. Rachel and I went to high school together. So I was heavily involved in theater and musical theater in high school and never really considered acting for camera or movie acting, even though that was another dream of mine since I was a little kid. I always wanted to have my own sitcom, but I was really into horror movies and I took a video production class in high school because I wanted to learn more about the process and I did learn a lot more about the process of filming and audio and lighting and all that kind of stuff but uh, that was more focused on TV production. We, we used to produce different TV shows every single week as part of our class, so we never really had a full-on film experience. I had a lot of friends that were very into filmmaking, some of whom I have worked with since, uh, but I personally never really learned a whole lot about making a movie on my own. So I wrote the script to Stab 4, and I just thought it was a fun little tribute to the Stab movies, but then I decided I, I really wanted to try to film it. Hi, I'm Rachel Alexandria Arnold. I was executive producer and past Tammy Taylor for Stab 4. Tammy Taylor went to high school with Sarah Campbell. She was bullied and she really enjoyed getting revenge to the point of insanity. Stab 4 was obviously the very first film we ever made. It was interesting because we started it because we were bored. We were kids in New Hampshire that had nothing to do, and we decided we were going to write a cheesy horror movie. I didn't have any equipment, I didn't have any money, I didn't know any actors, aside from people that I had done like musical theater with. So after recruiting a few people I had done musical theater with, like Jennifer Sue Mallard, who plays Heather Gale in the movie, um, I had done tons of musical theater with her. Uh, I started pulling in people from where I was working at the time, which was a restaurant. So the restaurant employees included a bunch of them, Shannon Nightingale, uh, Patricia Shanley, who's in Stab 5, so she uh, is not quite in Stab 4, but she is still from the same restaurant. Chris Doobie from Stab 4 was also from the same restaurant. Ashley Swank, who was in Stab 5, is also from the same restaurant. Amanda Constant, same restaurant. They were all co-workers of mine, or friends of mine, or people I had done theater with. So I kind of begged everyone to be a part of my project, and we didn't, again, think it was going to go anywhere. Like, it was just something I wanted to film and try out and see if I had any skills in filming and video editing and writing a movie and producing a movie and acting in a movie and doing all of that all at once. So I went for it. Watching Stab 4 today is uh, very hard for me and maybe even a lot of the cast. I know even some of the people that declined to be interviewed for this talked about how they weren't proud of their performances in it and I tried to remind them that it's not necessarily them. Whether they were good actors or bad actors or had experience or didn't have acting experience, it was really, really low budget uh, and it was filmed in a very short amount of time so they didn't get a lot of time to develop characters and get coached by me. As a director I kind of failed in the aspect of coaching my actors to be better actors. But, uh, and we filmed the entire thing on a flip camera, which if you don't know is like a little camera about this big, and uh, it's handheld, and it was 
It doesn't, uh, 1080p that exists now and 4K quality didn't exist back then in cheap little handheld cameras. So I believe everything was actually filmed in 720p, but sadly after I edited it, it's all in like 480p. So Stab 4 is really, really low quality, not just in production, but in uh, post-production too, because I, again, had no clue what I was doing. I don't have any regrets making Stab 4 though. We had a great time and we had a great cast and we had people who were just like willing to go there. It was an odd script because it was more of a parody of the Scream films and, and a tribute to the Scream films than it actually was its own like standalone film. So I don't actually remember where we started filming because it was such a long time ago. I'm not even sure what the first scene we shot was on that little mini flip camera. But I do know that the cast wasn't complete, the script was much shorter than what it was, uh, what it actually came out to be, even though the movie is still actually very short. I think it's only an hour and ten minutes long, and we thought it was going to be longer, but again, that was a, a learning experience for me, because I had never really written a script to see how a page translates to screen. We may have broken into Josh's mom's house while they were on vacation and filmed it there, which we later paid for. But it was a really fun experience. We were there for probably a week, if not more straight. Um, the camaraderie was great because it was a bunch of friends that were literally just doing it for fun. It wasn't any sort of production and we never, ever expected it to reach the heights that it did. We kind of posted it on YouTube as a joke. And I remember uh, having a call with Josh and him saying, you know, we have 5,000 views on this. And we were like, okay. Cool. Um, and then it kind of exploded, thanks to everyone watching for that. When I started the project, I was kind of working on it alone, aside from recruiting people to be in the movie. I didn't have Rachel by my side for that process. And as you all know, she becomes a much bigger part of the process for me even included in the writing and the directing and the behind the scenes and on screen, Rachel becomes a huge player in this. But at the beginning, Rachel actually wasn't in step four. And uh, I had started production and I really needed some help and I didn't know who else to turn to. And Rachel has always been one of my best friends and she had done musical theater. And once I thought about it, I was kind of sad that I hadn't offered her a part. So I actually wrote in a few more scenes where we see some flashbacks of the the uh, backstory of why the killers are, are the killers and why they're killing Sarah and all of her friends. And Rachel got added into that as like a crazy lunatic, um, former version of another character pre-plastic surgery, which Rachel's so gung-ho and so freaking awesome. Like, it's so cool that she doesn't take that as an insult. There are a lot of really cool memories for Stab 4 because it was our first one. Um, for instance, we filmed on an old flip camera, but they're really low quality because again, this was just for fun. We had lighting issues. We really learned everything we know about movies. The whole learning process started with step four on what not to do. We had exterior lighting that was run on a battery and so much of the movie was written <laughs> outside. Thank you, Josh. Uh, <laughs> and I was literally just originally along for the ride. I wanted to be in the background. Um, he came to me and said, hey, I'm gonna do this movie. I'm bored, let's you know create something. I'm like, sure, as long as I don't have to be on camera. And he said to me, well, that's interesting because I wrote you a cameo. I was told that I could play this crazy person, which I was all for, obviously, um, because I don't consider myself an actress, even to this day. I really still don't consider myself an actress. I can read lines and try and put some emotion to them, and some people say that's acting, but I don't feel like I'm an actress. Rachel's down to play anything, which is really awesome, and she got the weirdest part to play in that entire movie, like an obsessed like lunatic, and I'm sure she regrets making some of those faces that I ended up using in the final shots on camera, but... Rachel's awesome and uh, I got really lucky being able to add her on, into production later on as things rolled on because she became very helpful and she was able to help me film and she was able to help me with special effects or hold lighting and she would even bring a couple of friends sometimes to help hold lighting or move things around and keep things moving smoothly, you know. So Rachel, with all my heart, I love you. So um, I enjoyed that a lot and probably stab four was one of my favorites just because it not only was it our first one, we learned a ton. Everybody there just had a lot of fun. Um, very little issues with actors or actresses. There were some, as there are with any production, but it was probably the most seamless of all of our movies. So shout out to everybody who watched that for and allowed us to go on this crazy journey that is still not ending. We're still working on new things for you, so thank you. The opening scene of Stab 4 was filmed at my old apartment building, 
and uh, the voice of the boss is actually my ex-boyfriend, so that's kind of funny to know. Uh, and him and I lived together there, and he wasn't super into the idea of me filming a movie that involved using our apartment, but you know, I did it anyways, because I'm me and I do what I want, because I'm an asshole. <laughs> yeah, the opening of Stab 4 was really cool. Uh, Amanda Constant and Alex Winter were super fun to work with, and they were really gung-ho. That scene was already really fleshed out in the script, so we kind of knew every move and every step and line that they were going to take. We didn't do a lot of takes on Stab 4, so the actors weren't given a lot of opportunity to improve their performance because we were in such tight time constraints and I didn't know what I was doing. We kind of rushed through everything. So the opening, once we got through all the dialogue and got the lines right and realized we had to go back and refilm some of it because you could see like a mouse from a computer sitting on the couch and stuff like that. There were little bloopers that we had to go back and fix really quickly while we were still filming because we knew we weren't going to have another night of filming. Her getting the text messages and the phone calls and I really wasn't sure how I was going to do them at the time, how we were going to see the text messages and the photo of Alex's character like peeing in the bathroom on her phone on screen. And we weren't trying to film the phones because our camera couldn't handle it. We had tried a few little tests of like filming someone's actual cell phone getting text messages and it wasn't working. So I knew later on I was going to have to figure out how to do it digitally. and. It came out so bad, and, and there's so many times I can say so many things came out bad in Stab 4, but, you know, Stab 4 is our beginning, so no regrets. Hashtag no regrets. It is what it is. Alex got his throat slit in the opening, and that was really, really fun, and I did the, the makeup for it. It was an interesting experience to try out new things, too. Like, I had never really had experience in special effects makeup, and I kind of knew going into this movie once production started that I was going to have to do it all. So we actually, um, his throat was made out of some form of like skin putty and we just kind of molded it and drew on it and painted it and added it in blood and nothing super fancy. It didn't actually squirt or bleed or anything. All that kind of stuff. We kind of just threw blood on it and made it happen. So he was super gung-ho. He loved the death scene and he was really, really excited about it and Alex was super fun to work with the whole time. Like. He was really calm and patient and happy to be there, which is, is really cool because I didn't actually know him at the time. He was Amanda's boyfriend in real life and she kind of convinced him to play the part for us and it worked out so well because he's so funny in the part and his death is awesome. So then it leads into an attack scene on Amanda's character, Haley, and there's like a whole run around through the building. She gets in an elevator and this is... um. One of the rare scenes that I actually storyboarded, and I don't have the storyboards anymore, but when I first started production on this, I really wanted to plan every single shot to make it so things went smoother and easier. So this scene, there was a storyboard that existed for it, and we pretty much stuck to it and went shot by shot by shot by shot and knocked it out back to back, especially when we knew that blood was going to be involved. So after Alex died, since we were filming just me, Alex, and Amanda, uh, Alex actually kind of took over the camera for some of it too, aside from shots that I set up that were like steady shots, but any of the moving shots where you see the killer in the costume and Amanda, that's actually Alex filming because I was in the costume playing the killer. So then Amanda, you know, gets stabbed to death in a trash room behind the elevator, which was a real place in my apartment building and we just thought it would be kind of an interesting place to do it and she did a great job like we had an awesome time filming her death scene I remember the blood shocking her and that's a common theme with a lot of the actors that as soon as blood hits them it's like this whole new level of reality happens and they kind of like freak out for a minute and it takes them a few minutes to like catch their cool and stuff like that so we had that moment but we got past it and we filmed our awesome death scene and she did great dying and funny note, uh, when you see the character exit out of the door after he kills her, uh, the door he's exiting out of actually leads to a dumpster. So it was me in the costume. So when I step out of that door, I actually had to just step onto a ledge because there's no ground there. It's actually like the level of a second story. <laughs> so I had to step out onto a ledge and just kind of balance on the end until the shot was over. So that was funny. And the script was actually written a little bit differently in one aspect. In the original version of the script, um, I had decided that female exploitation in horror movies was annoying to me, especially as a gay man. Like, I really don't need to see all those boobies. Uh, <laughs> and I understand, you know, it becomes kind of like a horror movie trope that things like this happen, but I kind of wanted to reverse that. So the original opening of Stab 4 had Amanda's character, Haley, walking in and catching her boyfriend masturbating to a Stab movie. <laughs> And, uh, while we filmed it, it was cut out and the footage now is non-existent and you guys will never see it, but it did exist that we were trying to exploit the males and not the females and that's actually a running theme that you will see throughout the rest of the Stab movies is the males kind of get exploited and the females are kind of always the ones in power. Even when it comes to me and Rachel's character in the later on movies, 
it looks like I'm in power, but it's really Rachel running the show. I think over the 10 years, it's been 10 years, my goodness, the 10 years that we've done this, um, I've developed many different roles in the movies, but one that has kind of stayed consistent is I'm cast mom. This definitely started in Stab 4. We were stuck in a house. Um, we really, though we didn't stay there overnight, we basically were there overnight. And I was charged with kind of corralling everybody and keeping them on script and running lines with them and that's where this started and it was a lot of fun it may not have continued to be a lot of fun throughout the next couple of productions but for the first one for the most part it was fun um and i kid because even though we had issues in, in the next productions it still was a lot of fun to bond with everybody and, and see what people were bringing to the table it, it's really neat to see that it worked out like that, that I wrote so many strong, powerful female characters. And I think that's because I was raised by so many strong, powerful female characters. My mother and my grandmother and my sisters all serve as huge inspirations to me when I'm writing and creating female characters. And uh, their strength and their vulnerability and how real they are really, I think, helps add a lot of levels to the different characters. If you don't know, the actors also contribute their own wardrobe, so everything you see us wearing in the movies is something that we've brought. Um, that has changed later on in productions. We started buying some clothes for some of the actors for certain scenes and stuff like that. But most of the time, any of the clothes that the actors are wearing are actually their own clothes, which I'm actually wearing one of my outfits from Step 4 right now. This is my shirt that I'm wearing when I meet Jennifer's character in my office. So our original Ghostface costume that we used in Stab 4 was such a piece of shit. Uh, the fabric wasn't right. It actually had pinstripes in it. If you look really close, you can see pinstripes in the costume. Uh, but it was the only black kind of sparkly fabric that we could find. And we, I did the best I could. I have a little bit of sewing experience. Thank you, Mom. My mom taught me how to sew when I was little because she got sick of making costumes for me and all my productions and plays and dress up time. <laughs> So I sewed our costume and I thought I knew what I was doing and it, it didn't come out well. So later on in other movies you'll actually see the costume slowly improve, but in Stab 4 and Stab 5 we used this same costume with the weird arm dangle things that kind of actually look like socks because I had a, the fabric was not double sided sparkly so I had to sew it together to make both sides of it sparkly. I did not do it right. And then the hood almost has a visor on it like he's wearing a hat um, because I was trying to keep some form to the hood but that didn't work out. And then the mask in Stab 4 is even worse. When we started filming Stab 4, they hadn't announced Scream 4 yet. It wasn't even a plan. Um, and the only masks that we could find were these really cheap foam versions of the mask. So a couple of people actually own them now because we auctioned some off to raise money for some of our other productions. But the cast actually signed these horrible foam masks. And uh, man, they were a pain in the butt to film with because if you don't know, when you film with these ghost face masks, you usually have to cover under the eyes, like in here, there's fabric because you can see people's eyes through them and that kind of gives away who the killer is, even though most of the time it's me or another actor playing the killer who isn't the killer. But um, you have to cover it up because all the lighting on set will make it so that you can see the actor's eyes. But we couldn't do that in the foam masks because uh, every time we tried to glue something, it would melt the foam. Like we tried hot glue, which was stupid at first, and that melted the foam, so we lost a mask there. And then we actually tried like a liquid adhesive, and somehow it ate through the mask. So, not only was the costume bad in Stab 4, but the mask was bad too. Sorry, Ghostface, we did not do you justice. We did have issues with people taking longer than they should have because they wouldn't listen. Um, from Stab 5 on out, we would have this intro meeting with people and say, hey, Josh is bad cop, Rachel's good cop. If you listen to Rachel, you don't have to deal with Josh. And that is because of Stab 4, because I don't know how many times I would say, hey guys, quiet on set, or hey, go here and run your lines so that you're ready, and none of it was listened to. And then one day Josh had an epic meltdown and basically told everyone off and said, you know, Rachel's here to help you out and you're not listening to her, you're not respecting her, and She's just trying to help you be better, get through your scenes quickly so that we can all go home. And so from there on out, every single time we had a production, it didn't matter if it was a short movie, if it was a full-fledged picture, that's how we started everything. So that goes back to Cast Mom and how it started. And uh, people started to learn. I'm a lot, I sugarcoat things, I guess is the best way to say it. And even if someone's really irritating me, it takes a lot longer for that to like come outward. 
not for Josh. I think many of our fans and viewers can probably sense that already, so I don't think that that's a secret. Um, but for me, it, it takes a lot. So if I am melting down, there's a problem. And uh, people started to learn because I got to that part, but not in step four. So yeah, that was probably the most challenging part about step four, aside from filming things and learning how to film things. The cast of step four was just awesome. And I feel so lucky that I got the chance to work with them. And like I said, they were all just like friends and coworkers. So they didn't have a lot of acting experience, but it was okay because I didn't have a lot of filming experience and we weren't planning on doing anything with it. But everybody just brought so much to their characters. Jennifer Sue Mallard, playing Heather Gale was just phenomenal. The end sequence when you finally get the big reveal of how Heather Gale is connected to everything is just nuts. She kind of starts off all sad and then she cracks up laughing and loses it. And, and then Audrey Marquis, who plays Sarah Campbell, is a phenomenal, phenomenal dramatic actress. I had actually done a production with her in high school where she played Maria in West Side Story, so that's how I knew that Audrey could act. And I love Audrey. and. She really brought a lot to the character and brought a lot of life to the shit that was on the page because I won't lie, the script for Stat 4 is not good. You can buy a copy of it and read it. Uh, it it's sold everywhere now. It, it's not the strongest script and that character is not that well written. She does have some depth, but we actually added in a lot of the depth as we went on. Working with Audrey was an interesting experience because, like I said, she's so committed, so she had a lot of suggestions for the character. So her and I would sit and talk about things that could maybe work, like all of the um, entries that you see that she's doing on her webcam for therapy are not actually in the original version of this script. It was something that we had talked about and she kind of ad-libbed through them and we thought it would be a cool way to give her character another layer and show what was really going on with her and she's not just the strong face that she puts on. But the character of Sarah Campbell is actually a great character, and a lot of fans were mad in Stab 5 when we switched to reality that we were no longer following the Sarah Campbell storyline. And I think that's because Audrey really did give it her all, and she did such a good job with the performance. And here is a fun fact, too. Audrey is actually the only actress in StabMovies.com history to receive any sort of financial compensation for her role. Uh, she lived quite far away. Uh, probably about an hour and a half away from where we were filming and we just had to reimburse her for gas every time so she didn't get paid or anything like that but we had to pay for her gas to get there every time because uh, she was so far away but I refused to have a different lead girl. There was, top secretly, a different female was originally cast as Sarah Campbell and turned down the role. She was a former beauty queen and she was gorgeous and she's a great actress but she wasn't into horror that much. So uh, the original Sarah Campbell, whose name will never be revealed, but there was a different Sarah Campbell originally. But Audrey originally actually told me no. Uh, when I first asked her to do it, she said no too. And she was busy and she didn't have time for production. And I begged, I begged hard because Audrey is phenomenal and I know she can cry on cue and I know she can get emotional. So I wanted to have her. So that was what we worked out was a, uh, a very tight time schedule that we could use her and that we would reimburse her for gas for doing it. And then of course we had some other awesome side players. Shannon Nightingale, who did a great job playing the like ditzy blonde, which is not who she is in real life at all. She's actually very intelligent and very cool and very collected, but she played Shannon Lewis, who was just dumb. And then as her sister, uh, was one of my best friends, Laura Coleman, and Laura has been in uh, two stab movies, and she has been my best friend for years and years and years, and she's actually one of the main characters in the kids' books that I write, too, because that's how much I care about her. So, Laura, um, I think that took some coaxing to get Laura to do the movie. Uh, she definitely had fun while she was there, but I don't think she wanted to be an actress by any means, so she was doing it kind of as a favor to me, and I think she did a great job. Hi, I'm Laura Coleman, and I play April Lewis in Stab for Fresh Blood. So my character, April Lewis, was Shannon Lewis's older sister, and she was a good sister. Um, she was loving, nice, um, for the most part. I think if you said something about somebody that she cared about, though, she would let you know. April had a boyfriend who was my boyfriend in real life as well um, at the time, and the part was, I think, kind of written a little bit to me, having no acting experience. Um, I think that kind of had to happen a little bit um, to make it easier for me to um, come across as more authentic. 
I think one of my favorite parts about being in the staff movies was working with Josh. He's one of my best friends and when he asked me to do it, um, I was a little hesitant because I don't have acting experience, but it ended up being really fun. Um, I got a couple of my friends to also do it. Um, I got my boyfriend at the time, Adam, to do the movies with us and also my friend Rihanna. Um, I got to meet new people, which was fun. It was um, a lot of laughing. Uh, because most people were amateur acting, so um, a lot of funny moments would happen. Laura also brought along Rihanna, who plays my sister in the movie, Mandy Myers, and one of the killers, who was revealed to actually be Tammy Taylor, and Rihanna was just awesome on set. She gave it her all, and she actually declined to be interviewed for this because you know, she's a little bit embarrassed of the ending of the movie because she didn't really think she's a good actress. And the truth is, she wasn't an actress at all. She was a friend of a friend, and she was doing us both a favor. So we are eternally grateful to you, Rihanna. Thank you so much for doing that for us. And I'm sad we couldn't get you to come do an interview because it would have been interesting to hear you say that. But man, I think we killed it together. Get it? We killed it because we killed everyone together because we were the killers. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of um, the memories that I kind of forgot about and then re-remembered as I was watching the movies was how I was sitting on the stairs and I couldn't remember my lines. So I was reading my lines off of the script, so every once in a while you kind of see me looking down. Um, that's to jog my memory because I was having a really hard time that day especially remembering my lines. Filming one of the scenes too, uh, we filmed it at Josh's house. Uh, it was his mother's house. So I've known Josh forever. Um, he lived there for a while um, and he wasn't living there at the time. Um, his mother was away so we might have broken in to film some of the scenes um, and use the wonderful yard um, that she had to have a fire. Um, but that was a pretty interesting memory um, that you won't forget. <laughs> so because we were using Josh's mother's house kind of um, sporadically and within maybe a little bit of a time frame. Um, there was one of the girls in my scene, Shannon, who was my sister in the movie. Um, she was not present. So some of the lines I'm actually talking um, to her and she's not there. So she was edited in after, um, which was pretty interesting, but um, having so many people there, they helped me through and it was a lot of fun. So my death scene in Stab 4 was my favorite death scene to film out of the two movies that I was in um, because I die in my car. Laura's death scene was super fun to film. We drove around and we filmed in a car and she let me swing a real knife at her. That's a good friend right there. I got a phone call from my boyfriend and um, it was actually the killer. Um, so he tells me to drive, I get in my car, and that was super fun. Um, me and Josh were in my little Corolla, and we were driving up and down the street very slowly on like a dead street. Um, I can't remember exactly what street it was, but it was a lot of fun because we would drive, and the killer comes from the back seat and kills me. Um, while I'm driving, I like slam on the brakes, so all of that was real. We really were driving as I was on the phone, freaking out. Um, so that was a lot of fun to film in my little Corolla. Fond memories of that car as well. Thank God Josh is one of my best friends because we did use a real knife in that scene and I had to trust him and I was driving and I'm on my phone. So things that you wouldn't think about doing now that I'm so much more mature. <laughs> but um, it was it was a memorable day. A lot of time spent in the car driving slowly back and forth and back and forth, so I enjoyed that a lot. After I finished um, filming part of my scene, kind of all the way up until uh, the death scene, I filmed that night at Josh's mother's house, and uh, the filming continued and I hung around, and that was really cool to see. Not only was I like having that relief of, all right, my part's over, I get to enjoy and watch everybody else, it was um, pretty interesting because there were a lot of people um, forgetting lines or doing amazing at lines, um, a lot of people meeting each other for the first time or people that knew each other already. Um, I remember at one point all the girls were crammed into the bathroom doing like hair and makeup in there together so that was fun. The night at, um, at Josh's mom, the scene with the bonfire, um, that went well into the night which was exhausting. 
There was another scene that I was in um, where I, there was a pile of bodies and um, so we had to have makeup done um, and I don't remember a ton about that night but um, I do remember having to lay there super still, you know, don't breathe, don't let your stomach move, all of that kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys all think it came out good. But yeah, and then we had Alicia Vigeon and Marcel Robinson and um, uh, Shayna Royston and Brett Mallard and Karen Ferrandino and all these awesome people that were involved in the movie. And if I left any of you out, I'm sorry. I, I'm not trying to list the whole cast here. I'm just, we had a really great time filming everything. So another fun side note about Step 4 is that the side scenes, the flashback scenes where we see Sarah Campbell's past life, I actually didn't write those. Rachel wrote those. Josh wrote the script, right? Like he, he came to me saying that he wanted to create this after the script was already written. But he said that there were some holes that he hadn't finished and some flashback scenes and he actually gave me the opportunity to write them. So I wrote every single one of those flashbacks scenes but the funny part about this is I was not there for every single one of the filmings of these flashback scenes so I had no idea what they were gonna look like uh, I think he did an excellent job it was awesome for the very first time ever that I got to watch people act out something I had written and make it come to life which was really cool hey guys my name is Shayna I played Casey Campbell in stab four um, Sarah Campbell's little sister I did die so a little spoiler alert um, I had so much fun filming this. I didn't have a huge part for this film. Um, it was kind of on the smaller side, but definitely still a lot of fun. We, um, for the death little like pictures that he kind of alluded to, we uh, doused myself in like this syrup stuff that was like all red and totally ruined my clothes. Um, but it was, it was really fun, really sticky. In the flashbacks at the end of the movie, uh, when you see Rachel's character killing Brett Mallard and Karen Ferrandino, the parents, the, the Campbell family parents, um, it's actually Jen Mallard in the mask playing them and killing her own father from real life and our friend Karen. And she also plays a body double of the dead version of Sarah's sister, Casey, because Shana, who played the part, couldn't be on set that night, and uh, Jen's hair was close. They both had curly brown hair, so we stuck Jen in, and it's actually the back of Jen's head that you're seeing when her parents are running toward her. And then it's still Jen in the mask playing the killer when uh, the Campbell parents get stabbed to death. So let's talk about Josh's character's death scene. We probably filmed that so in so many takes. It was ridiculous. We could not get the blood to be the right color. I know that this is something so simple, but literally every time he spit up and went down the, the cabinet doors, it was pink. He was spitting pink. And you, you watch it, go back and watch it. You will see it is pink. And there was nothing that we could do. Everybody else's stuff was fine. Doobies, we spilled the blood, yes, but it was still red. Of course, for Josh's characters, it's bright pink. Writing the movie, I knew I always wanted to play the killer and to pay tribute to the Scream movies, I knew there had to be two killers. And I love when there's a female killer, so I had to add in a female killer. And then, of course, Scream 2 is my favorite of the Scream movies, so I love including the mother killer as a third killer as a surprise. And though Heather Gale isn't technically the parents of Teddy and Tammy, she is their stepmother and reveals that she has killed their father as well, and was kind of guiding them in the process of killing Sarah and her friends to get revenge for making fun of her stepkids in high school. All of the death scenes were really fun to film. When Adam gets killed out by the dumpster, you can actually see blood on his hand in the last shot. And that was because his little badge on his chest, his security badge, had slipped off and the pin kind of cut his pinky open, so his hand's bleeding through that. And that scene was actually written a little bit differently too. Originally, once he got the trash bag put on his head, the killer filled up the trash bag with a hose with water and then stabbed into it with his knife, making the bag pop and all this like bloody water would squirt out and Adam would fall over dead. So we tried to accomplish this a couple of times, but it was a little bit of a freak out situation where Adam didn't want to drown, even though obviously he wasn't going to. There was holes in the bags, in the back, and everything would have gotten out. And then we actually saw a movie where a very similar killing happened. So we decided just kind of to cut it down and to have him kind of just get suffocated by this trash bag, which is weird for a ghost face killer. But you know, 
even though we make movies called Stab, you can't always kill people by stabbing them. Something has to be a little more exciting here and there. So I think Adam's death scene getting suffocated was pretty cool. Chris Doobie is awesome. I love him in this movie. He plays such a little punk in this movie and he was so good at it. And Chris was another employee that I worked with at the restaurant that knew a bunch of people. So uh, to see him evolve from Stab 4 to Stab 5 was really fun too, but he did a great job playing CJ in Stab 4, and his death scene was one of my favorites to film, but we had such a hard time filming it because it was so dark and it was outside, so we only had one bottle of blood for this entire movie. It was like this big, it was like a pint of fake blood, and we had to use that the whole time. So while we were filming Chris's death scene, Rachel and I kept putting it places and it kept falling over and spilling so we started like freaking out that we were losing all the blood that we had left for the movie and we still had to film the finale. So you'll notice the blood use uh, kind of gets less and less as the movie goes on too because we <laughs> it's so limited and we kept spilling it. <laughs> but Chris was awesome. He did a great job in his death scene and I think everyone really thought he was going to come back as a killer because he really was the red herring of that movie and he kind of played it well that you would be suspicious of him, but for no reason, because he really was genuinely a nice guy, aside from a few douchebaggy comments he had made earlier in the movie. The death scenes out in the woods were really fun to film too. Marcel's death scene where he goes to pee and then gets killed by the killer, that one was really fun to film and he did a great job. Like We had a really fun time filming that and he had a little bit more experience with acting too, so he kind of knew angles and where to turn and how to make it look like he got hit when he didn't and stuff like that. So that was fun. And then weeks later we actually filmed the second death scene in the woods, Alicia's death scene, um, where she gets her throat slit. And man, oh man, was that a pain in the ass. We wanted it to be this big, exciting chase death scene. She gets her Achilles tendon slit and then she falls and she's crawling. So we really wanted this long, like drawn out thing and it just like, it just wasn't working out. Like we just didn't have the time, we didn't have the the amount of people we needed to help us with the camera and the lighting and her little brother who I believe was like 12 at the time was actually holding lighting for us while we were doing this and he had a friend there who was helping us too and they actually ended up breaking our lights which was even funnier and Alicia was so gung-ho and she had blood squared all over her and she ruined one of her favorite bras and that that was just a really interesting night of filming and it, we were in the woods and it was very buggy and it was way after the rest of production had ended and we realized we still hadn't filmed her death scene, so we kind of had to catch up. We filmed with a buck 119, and it's actually in the end of the movie. Rihanna's character complains about the fact that my character got her a buck 119 when it should be a buck 120. <laughs> There's two inches different in the blade, man. Like, you can't fuck around with that. That's, that's extra killing right there. So, most of Stab 4 was actually filmed in a very, very short period of time. Um, anything that takes place at Shannon's house in the movie, which is actually my mother's house, who was on vacation at the time, and I kind of just broke into it and used it without her permission. Sorry, Mom. She wasn't super happy about that, but, um, you know, we cleaned the whole house after we made it up to her, and she came home to a very clean house. All of that kind of happened over the course of, like, three days. And we didn't have long, and we were working around other people's schedules, so every scene was scheduled to the T, what time you had to be there, especially because everyone was still working, most of us at the same restaurant. So it's just kind of bounced around. And then all of the other side scenes, we just filmed whenever we could, as quickly as we could. And that was kind of the whole idea of Stab 4. It was, we just kind of rushed it out and threw it together. So the funny part is that we actually did a premiere for Stab 4 too. And I say that it's funny because it is probably our worst produced film. While the storyline is fun and the actors did a great job and we had a great time making it, no part of it should ever be shown in a movie theater. It's just, it's that low budget and that, awful the amount of takes that cut to the same shot because we didn't have different angles and oh man I, I, I don't even know <laughs> like I said I could go on for days listing the bad things about Stab 4 but the thing is we have to remember Stab 4 is what started us and Stab 4 is what got us going so luckily by the time that we had finished filming Stab 4 they had just announced that they were going to go into production on Scream 4 so we started getting lots and lots of press because we were already promoting Stab 4 and lots of people were excited about it and even though the movie was awful it kind of became an overnight viral sensation now right now Stab 4 already is way past like 16 million views on our youtube channel so we have Stab 4 to thank for everything but it was a complete and utter shock to us we did not see Stab 4 going anywhere so the fact that it led on to so much more and so many more movies and so many more actors and experiences and friendships you know, I think that's what makes Staff 4 worth it. Everything that we got out of it as people.
We came together as a team, we had fun, and like a lot of the other cast members have said in other interviews that we've done for our movies, it really was like going to summer camp. Like, I think it's an experience none of us will ever forget, and though we all have our regrets, Stab 4 is Stab 4 Fresh Blood. There will never be another Stab 4 Fresh Blood. And that's just kind of cool, you know? Now we're part of the Stab legacy, and this is what started it all. So I remember when we were done Stab 4 finally, and I watched it, and I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's terrible. I appreciate everybody who watches it, but it was awful. Um, but I think it needed to be awful because we learned what not to do to keep moving forward. And I think that that's true of every movie. Every movie I watch is a little bit less terrible, but still terrible until we get probably to six or seven because I'm starting to see everything that we've learned really pay off. So even though to me, Stab 4 is like the black sheep of everything that we've done, um, as far as filming quality, I think it was necessary and it's really what made this whole journey possible. So thank you for watching it and not thinking it was terrible or thinking it was terrible and still watching it. I appreciate it because uh, you're the reason that we're still here.